Okay guys, welcome to the course uh, Product Design and Development um, Today, I will talk about product architecture and it will follow by design for manufacturing So I'll start first with product architecture So it consists of two things uh, The first is called product, I think everybody knows and then the second one is called architecture architecture is um yeah is something related to the structure and usually use of building a house and people use the word architecture and the person that has uh, expert to build a house or con uh, construction is called architect so as uh, taken from the same book yeah uh, with the same title called architecture of product or product architecture uh, If you look at here so uh, starting from the planning and uh, Concept development now we are starting to Go to system level design So in the system level design it is more on the composition decision so product architecture is determined early in the development process. Okay, uh, this one example, you let pocket uh, desk jet printer or it's P desk jet printer. So let's take a look. Uh, just imagine what is actually inside uh, the desk jet printer. So yeah, it's quite easy to uh, to imagine that inside will uh, will be many components PCBs cabling system power system and etc so that's uh called architects so how to understand the structure of the product so the outline for today is the de definitions of product architecture and then the concept of modularity and then followed by the step for creating the arti architecture and the related system level design issues Okay, uh, what's the definition? Product architecture is a scheme by which the functional elements, so the functional elements, components of the product are minutes, arranged, and also assigned into physical building blocks, or we call it chunks. So blocks and chunks it is kind of uh, are the collections of several several functional elements or component of product and these blocks are chunk interact so if you look at uh, the example of printer so they have uh, probably uh, printing mechanisms power mechanism and also a paper mechanism so let's say we call it three blocks right paper mechanism power mechanism and printing mechanisms three blocks or three chunks and uh, uh, yeah all chunks or blocks in track yeah that's a very simple uh, understanding of um, physical uh, blocks or chunks so uh, the arrangement of functional elements into physical chunks becomes the building blocks for the product or family of products uh, okay so the physical chunks if we look at uh, maybe as an analogy if you build a house uh, a house consists of um, maybe uh, for our uh, uh, yeah it has many pillars okay pillars or walls or and and it has roof and also a flooring system and has cabling system and etc so this is the same so product consists of uh, many modules or blocks or uh, chunks and every module has function and all module are uh, interacted so considerations at, at the product architecturing so how will it affect the valid 
the ability to offer product variety yeah that's a question so uh, how we need to dis uh, decide the product variety and also uh, what kind of cost that affected and how about the lead time more complex product the lead time will be longer and more uh, variety in terms of materials and the lead time also uh, longer and we have to consider uh, whether we have uh, um, suppliers or not and then how will it uh, affect the development process management as well so uh, in product architecture we have two uh, common architecture this the first one we call it modular and then the second one we call it integrated of course they are uh, different totally different okay modularity or modular and integrated or integration so what is the difference so modular chunks or blocks implement one or a view functional elements in their entirely so it means that its functional element is implemented by exactly one physical chunk so it means that one chunk carries one function okay one chunk has one function then the interaction between chunks are well defined and are generally fundamental to the primary functions of the product it means that if you have let's say you have five chunks of product okay five chunks five blocks of product and all five blocks in uh, uh, it means that they are interacted they interact and then uh, they are combined so they have a uh, primary functions of product okay but if they are separated it means that its chunk or its block separated they can work independently they have uh, their own function even they are separated okay and how about uh, integrated or yeah integrations so this is something related to the functional elements of the product are in the implemented using more than one chunk so one chunk cannot uh, give uh, specific functions of product okay so uh, more than one chunk can be two chunks have function okay so a single chunk implements many functions what does it mean that one single chunk can contribute to the sub function a sub function b sub function c and etc okay so that the inter interaction between chunks are ill defined and maybe incidental to the primary function of the product it means that if we are not carefully taking care of the uh, chunks how they interact then the product will fail so one example for for this one is that if you have a product for example product certain product and then it has many uh, chunks or building blocks so that product has function really has a function if there is at least two chunk interacted but if there is one chunk down or one chunk break uh, then the product will not uh, function okay this is one example for modular design so this is a modular workstation okay modular workstation design so it has many different chunks can you guess it yeah uh, probably this is a for table this is the office table this is the l shape table this is round shape uh, table and also it has uh this one or yeah 
many 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 table many 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 table but uh yeah they, they they are interacted and actually they can work independently so let's say that this is a uh, block one this is block two block three block four five six seven eight so we have eight blocks it we have eight chunks so if they are separated and for for example this this block uh, or this chunk can has their their own functions right can work without integrated like this one so they can combine to form modular workstations but actually they can function independently because one chunk or one block can have their unique functions but it looks different if we look at here it is the integrated motherboard inside your computer inside your PC, uh, CPU uh, CPU uh, okay uh, so uh, this one cannot work without uh, if it uh, I mean this uh, let's say this this is block one block two and block three block four and then block five for example so they can work uh, this product can work if all blocks functioning but if let's say that this is uh, uh, yeah this this block has a problem then I, I guess there is a problem with the in the entire product performance okay so factors some factors that affecting architecture modularity so we think about modular or not because modularity sometimes it works yeah it works well for modular design but sometimes it is very costly and sometimes uh, we refer to we prefer to integral or integrated design so it uh, it influenced by product changes variety uh, component standardizations product performance manufacturability and also product development management Okay, we take a look one by one. So, uh, for modular architecture that related to product chains, so this is uh, this allows to minimize the physical changes required to achieve a functional change. Some reasons for product chains because we do uh, upgrading, add-ons, product adaptations. Uh, yeah according to where or um, according to it, it is disposable disposable or not consumptions flexibility in use and how to reuse in creating subsequent product so there are some uh, uh, factors uh, that drive for product changes so we have we, we, we need to adopt for, for, for that right we need to adopt for that so modularity, I think modularity is is uh, 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 preferable. Okay, modularity is preferable. Uh, let's say that here uh, we talk about adaptations. So um, yeah, adaptations adapt to different operation environment. It means that uh, yeah, sometimes uh, okay. Uh, let's say that. Uh, yeah, uh, you are now uh, your product, your product working in the uh, voltage of 220, right? 2020. So, uh, so we have to think about if what if your product can only work in 110 uh, volt. It means that it is uh, uh it is uh, it is uh, appropriate for 110. But actually now you are in 220 so we need uh, adaptations right we need uh, a product called uh, stabilizers uh, step up and step down stabilizer and we can adjust okay that product can can work but uh, we need uh, uh, other other tools or device to to adjust that's one example okay so uh, the the uh, the key point here is flexibility okay flexibility for modular architecture okay next uh, product variety 
Yeah, so it, it talks about the range of product or models concurrently available in the market and modular can vary, vary. Uh, modular can vary without adding tremendous complexity to the manufacturing system so it means that uh, yeah uh, we agree that uh, product variety is driven by customer uh, needs right customer demand and but uh, we, we have to look at, uh, yeah, we have to think about uh, the complexity of the system. I think a uh, good product is not too complex, but good product can be flexible enough. Okay, and component standardizations, yes, it talks about how to use the same components in multiple products. So don't use a component that's very difficult to find in the market. One example is that if, uh, let's say that you have um, gadgets or you have a mobile uh, smartphone, for example, and the battery has a problem, then you, you and it's time to find a battery in the market, right? And it is uh, easy to find battery because battery uh, for um, a mobile phone or smartphone is a standard uh, component. Yeah, yeah, the size in terms of the size and also the power is a standard. So don't use uh, non-standard component. And also it's very important uh, that's related to how to increase the production volume. Okay, and it, 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 it become a problem if the production volume is high and you are not using a standard component. Okay, and then product performance for integrated design it is to allow optimizing the performance for an individual integrated architecture. Yes. And how to allow function sharing. So how to implement multiple function using a single physical element. And how to allow for redundancy to be eliminated through function sharing and geometric nesting. It means that uh, this is related to the manufacturing cost. Yeah, it uh, means uh, for integrated design, as you can see, uh, you have uh, seen in the previous slide that integrated design is actually depends on the performance, all good performance of all chunks or blocks. So make sure that, uh, yeah, uh, that all chunks work well so that the performance of the product can can be achieved, right? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, you are asking that which one is cheaper, uh, modularity or integrated product? Modular or integral? I think, yeah, modular is more expensive than integral, right? Okay, in terms of manufacturability, so design for manufacturability or manufacturing or DFM can be performed on the chunk level, but not across several chunks. For example, uh, how to minimize the total number of part counters. It means that uh, design for manufacturing uh, is talking about whether that product can be manufactured or not. Can be manufactured, can be looking, uh, can be looked uh, from uh, the complexity of the design and also uh, the components that use for that design again standard component is very important so uh, make sure that standard component is used thus it is more applicable to integrated design yes uh, manufacturability uh, because uh, we, we think about uh, not uh, design uh, not produce only one product but uh, we need to manufacture more than one product because uh, last uh, uh, last week or in the previous chapter, we think we talk about in, in industrial design. So design for manufacturing is also important. And then product development management, better for modular architecture. Yes, its modular chunk is assigned to individual or a small group, right? Because it has uh, functions and known and relatively limited functional interaction with other chunks yeah okay and this is not 
as easy for integrated architecture and because the detailed design will require close coordination among different groups okay guys so product development management is quite challenging okay it's quite challenging for uh, integrated architecture because in integrated architecture once again guys integrated architecture you have to make sure that the coordination among different groups that making components of the product should be well managed okay but for modular can be independent and product development management can be more flexible for modular architecture compared than integrated architecture okay. so um, yeah back to the basic of architecture design process what are some uh, steps or paces of processes that uh, could be done the first one is to create a semantic of the product this is the structure rough structure of the product and then clustering the elements chunks blocks of the semantic and then create rough geometric layout and then how to identify the fundamental and its incidental interaction so fundamental meaning is that the basic functions the basic operation of the product and also incidental it means that if the product has fail failure then it is quite easy to find the source of the accidents or incident Okay, the first one is how to create a semantic diagram representing the physical or functional elements of the product using blocks, arrows, and other notation. So uh, we can uh, differentiate the, the uh, semantic diagram according to the flow of forces of energy use and then flow of material and flow of, si flow of signal or data. So uh, yeah, make sure that all flowings uh, are well uh, prepared and then well uh, work okay and the factors for configuring clustering and this is the second one is geometric integration function sharing capability of vendors similarity of the design and production technology uh, product chains or design chains accommodating variety enabling standardizations and portability of their interactions so these are, are, are factors that uh, yeah related to the flexibility of the product okay the flexibility okay and then geometric system layout uh, you can provide in 2d or 3d drawings 2d i think is enough and 2d or 3d graphics or physical models also um yeah so uh, and then next one is incidental and fundamental interactions for fundamental interactions once again it is talking about for those which connect the building blocks such as energy flows material flows and data flows so it, it is for the functions of the product and then how about the incidental interactions it is uh, for those that arise because of geometric arrangements of the building blocks such as uh, thermal expansion of heat dissipation so for example if, uh, if we talk about uh, printing or you know, yeah any, any any product that use electricity printer you can use laptop i think is heat heating system is is uh, very critical so how to solve with the heat especially if the product is overheating is overheating then the product will be uh, slowing down in terms of uh, the performance right so the thermal expansions thermal discharge is very uh, critical so this is one example to highlight your understanding about the modular and uh, integral architecture this is called uh, modular architecture the the name of the product is called trailer so I, everybody knows trailer right trailer yeah truck trailer so this is uh this consists of how many blocks uh, I, uh, I yeah uh, i mentioned one two three four five six six blocks the first blocks they call a uh, box 
uh, hitch bearing bed springs wheels okay we have six blocks or six chunks okay so each block it uh, has functions specific function so this block uh, box for example it has a function to protect cargo from weather and then for example spring uh, the function is suspend trailer structure wheels transfer loads or to road so there is no crossing functions because again because modular architecture can work independently can work independently and it has specific functions and it is not crossing function so if it is broken then it it, it, it will not influence the performance of others so let's say that the the box not really work well so it will not uh, uh, influencing uh, the rest blocks right or the rest chunks so and it is easy to to identify which blocks or which chunks that has a problem so we can replace or we can fix maintain yeah i think you got the point right and how about the integral architecture this is more complex because uh, maybe the issue of costing the issue of uh, yeah the it means that availability of materials availability of suppliers so that um, yeah for example upper hall it, it, it okay it has uh, the same it has six blocks and or six chunk and for example this chunk that contributes uh, to this function for example upper hull um, they contribute to the protect cargo from weather and then support cargo loads and it's also support suspending trailer structure so it's very complex so that if it is broken then i think uh, the effect will be more uh, significantly influence the, the overall uh, uh, performance of the product yeah it's very complex and very complicated and what is it uh, yeah can you imagine this one uh, this is the rough geometry of the product so what product is it yeah you got an idea this is a product of or uh yeah this rough, rough uh, geometry of the product and then uh move to another example guys this is a modular product architecture so i think everybody knows swiss army knife and sony walkman right so this one consists of several chunks and each chunk has their own uh, functions and this one also several chunks right like a uh, uh, earphone and then it has uh, uh, this mechanism in Sony so let's say that uh, yeah between chunks they can work uh, independently but when they are combined well, well combined or well defined here if you say well defined and work and they, they can uh, provide you with uh, good performance of the product so uh, once again chunks or blocks implement one or few function entirely and interaction between chunk well-defined and a modular architecture that has advantages in simplicity and reusability for a product family or platform okay yeah uh, okay the keyword is simplicity and reusability okay and this is the platform architecture of sony workman that i said before uh, yeah, yeah that's inside the sony walkman um, i think th this is called uh, it it is not several blocks but it is one block it is another block another block and also the earphone is another block okay and how about integral product architecture these are the example so once again back to the definitions functional elements are implemented by multiple chunks or a chunk may implement many functions so, so one chunk may contribute many functions okay and interaction between chunk are poorly defined yeah poorly defined so integral architecture generally increases performance and reduces cost yeah this clear enough guys 
So why people think about integral architecture? Because the issue of costing. Of course, it reduces cost because you can you can uh, it means that you can save money by uh, putting more function in one chunk, right? Like this one. Well, a chunk may implement many functions. So, so I think it's very high utilization, maybe over utilization, reduces cost. And also increases performance, yes, because you, you try to compress everything in one, one uh, chunk. Uh, so the number of chunk needed is less than the dose in, in the, uh, uh, I mean in modular architecture. So is one example is a bicycle, right? So let's imagine if there is a problem with uh, uh, maybe yeah, if we, we, we try to disassemble the, this product, okay, it has wheels, it has a uh, saddle, it has pedal, it has, uh, uh, I mean, hand bar. So, let's say that hand bar, what is the function? Of course, you cannot use a uh, hand bar alone, right? So, what is it for? You also cannot use this um uh wheels yeah it has is nothing to do with the function so we you cannot use only one wheel to run a bicycle right so they, they must be combined because uh yeah the issue is to press or to compress everything to be one but also the threat of the threat of is yeah in terms of uh durability i guess everybody knows that in terms of durability, integral integral, integral design, I think it has a lower durability compared to uh, modularity. And also, this is a compact camera. I think you can uh, imagine how the chunk interact. Okay, how the uh, the chunk interact in this uh, compact camera. From the name, you, you can take a look. Compact camera. So everything is compressed, and it, it is very compact. So, how to choose the product architecture? Again, uh, product uh, architecture decision relate to the product planning and concept development decision. So, I won't say that modular is better than integral, but sometimes integral is better than uh, modular. So, uh, according to the product chains, again, product variety, standardizations, performance, manufacturing costs, project management, and system engineering. So uh, I think uh, yeah depends on on the uh, uh, yeah the issues okay the factors okay the factors if product chains so I guess you need more flexibility maybe modular is needed okay Mo Mo modularity is more preferred but, uh, and also product variety but in terms of standardizations maybe uh, yeah the, I think uh, yeah more you can choose modular or you can choose integral and, and etc okay okay guys try to understand uh, these uh, uh, factors that relate uh, with a product architecture is more appropriate okay and this is another example called integrated control panel so we don't say it is modular control panel yeah integrated of course this is integrated okay you got the, the idea right and uh, okay this one uh, for your exercise so is it modular or integral architecture for Motorola StarTech cellular phone Apple I, uh, iBook and Ford Explorer or Blade yeah and yeah again uh, in the concept of integral and modular apply at several levels so i think it, the the i mean the more critical level is called components because this component is uh, yeah the component is the lowest level or the bottom level of product that you can find the component in suppliers so here in component Make sure that uh, yeah, for the component there is a 
blue arrow and red arrow so red arrow it means that interaction within chunk it means that this one for example uh, this is chunk of block one so there is a uh, interactions between uh, component in the chunk of block A but sometimes chunk also interact uh, across it means that the component in chunk A has interaction with component in chunk C okay yeah uh, I think you can find in more this one you can find more in integral architecture compared to uh, modular architecture so back to the uh, example of product architecture for Hewlett packet gadget printer and this is a semantic diagram for desert printer so we have functions this is step by step that how the printer works so enclosed printer provide structure support print chart uh, cut rate and position cut rate and etc etc so um, yeah this one is the flow of forces of energy this one the black line and then uh, this is the thick one and I think the another another line we call it flow of material and this one and this one and this is uh, the flow of signal or data that one yeah intermittent line so um, the red box this is very important so what is the red box it is called chunks okay it is called blocks so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine blocks or eight or nine chunks uh, the name is enclosure system chassis system paper tray printer mechanism system print cartridge system user interface port and then logic port power code and brick and host driver software so this is an example of uh, printer okay how about the geometric layout yeah it looks like uh, building a house it, it is the house for printer and then this is the logic port printer get rate paper tray printer mechanism user interface port and also this is a uh, yeah another geometric layout 2d and this is a 3d so for your project uh, later you also can provide in 3d and also 2d and then the incidental interaction so what interactions so the potential damage or potential interactions or potential incidental yeah uh, for example for paper tray and printer mechanism there is a preparation so let's say that the preparations has a certain point right the maximum point for preparation so if if the preparation beyond the certain point then there is a problem with the paper tray uh, why the preparation uh, level increasing uh, once there is a probably there's an earthquake or when the printer fall down uh, yeah it has a high preparations right and also thermal distortions shielding thermal distortion again and etc so please find the incidental interactions between chunks and this is the type for modularity yeah we we can use a swapping modularity please take a look at the blue object here swap modularity sharing modularity and sectional modularity like this one Bus modularity, fabricate to fit modularity, and mix modularity. So, modularity can be anything. So, modularity again, guys. Um, yeah, once you uh, have a product, it has many chunks, and each chunk actually can work independently. Okay. Okay. For a conclusions for product architecture, 
Yes, architecture choices define the subsystem and modules of the product platform of Emily. The architecture can be two things, the um, modular and also the integral. And architecture determines what? Ease of production variety, visibility of customer modifications, and the system level production cost. Of course, uh, the key points for any uh, architecture design is that costing issue, modification, in, it means that flexibility, and also the variety because the product will be varied in some, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in the function of time, right? And again, the key concept is modularity and integral architecture, and then how to cluster into chunks. More clustering, I think, is more efficient. But remember, if you put everything to be one chunk in terms of cost, maybe it is very efficient, but in terms of the performance of product, there is a set off. Okay, I think that's all, guys, for uh, today. Uh, lecture on product architecture and we will continue with the design for manufacture thank you bye bye